So a lot of you guys have been asking me for updates on the tractor. We've spent so much time focused on the trailer that this poor tractor seems to have been kind of pushed by the wayside, but that's not totally the case. I'm gonna take you around and give you kind of an update on the tractor. And you know what I realized is um, whenever we first got the tractor, I don't think I gave you guys a proper tour of the whole tractor, you know, under the hood and all the little details. So why don't we go ahead and do that as well? We'll show you everything that's left to finish on the tractor, which by the way, is going to be done in 2023. It's gonna be really cool. We're also going to pull out the steering wheel, recover it, put it back in. Um, so at least we can cross that one thing off the list. We're also gonna uh, answer your Knight Rider questions. We're gonna show you how you can get your name on the Knight Rider trailer wall for all of eternity. There's a lot going on here, so let's get going. All right, so let's have a look under the hood here. To open the hood, the straps on the sides um, are already removed for the bodywork. So all I have to do is uh, give it a good tug. Okay, so I don't think I've shown you guys under the hood here yet, as far as I can remember, but we've got, uh, it looks like a diesel engine, right? This is the uh, Cummins. I th now I'm not totally um, in tune with every engine that this, uh, that the GMC Generals came with in 1984, but obviously this is the Cummins diesel. Um, you know, it sat for 15 years in a field in Idaho, but um, with the help of our friend Danny Nassif, he was able to get it running um, after sitting dormant for so long, it runs great um, as far as work that needs done under the hood uh, let's see we've got this shut off solenoid back here so the truck will turn on you know you turn the key hit the start button it'll run but when you turn the key it does not shut off and we're being told that it's an issue with the shut off solenoid because we can turn this little knob here and then it'll shut the truck off so um, we have the replacement part. We got to get in there and fix that. Um, probably also going to, yeah, replace these belts. You can see this one's pretty worn. These are all, I don't know, at least 20 years old. So we're going to get in there and get the belts cleaned up. We've already changed the filter, um, examined all the hoses. Everything looks, you know, pretty good under here. Still have some of the factory markings on... Uh, well, here, let, let me climb up here and we'll give you an even better view. There we go. There's the giant honking radiator. And I don't know if you can see that on the hood there. There should be insulation here, but it's all fallen off over the years. But 10-4-83, October 4th, 1983 is the date on the hood, which lines up. It's an 84 model. So, yeah. The bad thing about it sitting outside is it collects leaves, but if all goes well, by the end of this year, it will be permanently garaged when not in use, of course. But um, yeah, there we go. So it's dirty, but it's complete. Um, you know, these hoses probably need replaced. I see some cracking here. Um, all the wiring is good. Um, everything works on the truck except for one thing, which I'll show you here in a minute, but all the wiring's good. We're not going to mess with any of that. Um, like I said, belts, maybe those hoses need replaced, but other than that, it's, uh, pretty well good to go. It's very, very mechanically sound, which is awesome. All right, let's get down, take you around to the other side. The bumper does have a crease in it. Um, a lot of you guys are mistaking that crease 
for the crease on the first GMC General used in Knight Rider, which was a 1980 model, and the crease was on that side. So that crease is not related at all. When this truck was used on the show, you never saw a crease in the bumper. That would happen sometime after the show. At some point, we are going to have that bumper removed, fixed, re-chromed um, at some point. I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, when we got it, the emblem, the GMC emblem was broken off uh, right, right uh, here, I believe. So we got a replacement hood ornament here and then kind of grafted the two together. So this is original, this is original, and then this is a replacement piece. But we got a, found a really, really nice one, which is pretty awesome. All right, so we go over here. And there's the turbo. Like I said, everything works great. So the only thing that doesn't work is the, is it the pyrometer, pyrometer? I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, the wires to it are broken and it's, uh, you know, that's the sensor. We need to get a replacement, a replacement sensor here. I don't know if I can get that off with my hands, but um, so we need to find the part number for this and get ourselves a replacement. And then once we do, that'll be an easy fix. Um, it's really neat here because on some of these areas, especially where it's worn, you can see the history of the paint jobs. Um, if you check back to our previous videos, I did a great video before this was primed where you could see all the different layers of paint. So this came from the factory as a black GMC General. Knight Rider added the gold decals to it between seasons three and four when Knight Rider was on hiatus, um, this truck was repainted red, which you can see, and it was used in the movie Steel Collar Man. You can look it up on YouTube and see this truck in that movie. And then before the start of season four, it was repainted back to black. So you can't see it as well here, but you can see the original black, the red, the black again, and now the current blue, which uh, again is not long for this world, but there is some nice pieces of original black here. The air cleaner we took off here, and um, yeah, you can see traces of the original black, which is really, really neat. Um, yeah, I think that's about it under the hood here. So the rims, these are the correct Alcoa rims. Um, these all have date codes on them. We found the, the date of manufacture of all of these rims because these Alcoas are not only on the front, but they're on the back as well. And we checked all 10 of those Alcoas and they're all dated from the late 80s, which means none of those are the original rims from the show. They're the exact right style, which is awesome, but they're not the exact rims. So that's okay. As far as the tires go, we are actively working right now to get all of these tires replaced. Um, hopefully, in the next, uh, within the next, I don't know, four to six weeks, we're going to be able to say we have all new tires on and the correct rims in the back, which we'll get to. All right, we've got our secondary gas tank and then the stack here. So this is the original muffler from the 80s, which is ridiculous. And we know that because there's red overspray there from 1985 from when it was painted red for Steel Collar Man. It's still there today, which is really cool. So this pipe is original as well. However, it's got major issues. There's a giant hole here that I just put a piece of um, foil tape over because I didn't want critters getting in there. But um, we have a replacement pipe here, which I'll show you here in a few minutes that we need to get installed there. And you saw probably in a previous video um, when we got the truck, it just had a, an exhaust tip on it that was curved that wasn't correct. So this is the correct 36 inch straight pipe with the rain cap on it. So that's gonna be perfect. And what's nice is that'll clear the sleeper, which speaking of the sleeper, it is currently under construction and hopefully within the next uh, two months we'll have it, which is gonna be amazing. Can you imagine being able to set that sleeper on here? It's ridiculous. We talked about it again in a previous video. It's gonna be exact down to the rivet. You're just not gonna wanna miss it. Um, so back here we had to get a new drive shaft, which I mentioned before, because the axles, this frame was shortened. We lengthened it, had to push the axles back, needed 
the drive shaft lengthened. So it's not a new drive shaft, it's the original drive shaft is just lengthened. Um, so what do we have here? We've got our uh, connections, electrical connections and air connections here for the trailer. So we still have to do some work here because again, the sleeper is going here. So all of those connections have to be on the back of the sleeper somewhere way back here. So we're gonna replace that wiring, replace those air lines so they can all come back here. And then there was a deck plate right here, like a corrugated deck plate, and then a pogo stick to manage all of the electrical connections and the air. Okay, so speaking of air lines, we got, once we, again, extended the axles, none of the air lines fit. The air tanks were originally down here whenever we got the truck, which is incorrect. So when we extended the frame, we got the air tanks back to where they belong. And when we did that, we had to extend all the air lines. You see where this is going. It's just like chasing fixes here. So these are all new air lines here. We had to get new, brand new lines here for the air brakes. We got all those in. So um, that's all good. So what's left to do back here? Um, a lot of you guys pointed this out and this was, I guess, just a rookie mistake of mine. Um, the drive shaft is out of phase. So we've got to correct that issue. Um, and yeah, here's the back rims. Those are the same as the Alcoa front rims. They're just flipped around. Those are not correct for the show. The correct are the are steel rims. We showed you in a previous video. We have the steel rims. We got them powder coated. So they're ready to go on. But this is not something I don't think I can do myself. So we're going to have to get either a mobile service to come out here and, and switch them out. Or we're going to have to get the, the tractor towed somewhere. Which I'd prefer not to do. Because these are not safe to be on the road in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I'll show you here in a minute. One of them tires doesn't even hold air. Got the fifth wheel back on. Yeah, this whole back section here is all new and it's replicated exactly the way it would have been. Thankfully, we had some great pictures from back in the day of the back end of the tractor. So we were able to replicate this exactly. Got the original fifth wheel back on, got the airlines hooked up for that. There's the other air tank there. Yeah, what is it, this one? Yeah, you can see here, that doesn't even hold air. So definitely don't wanna be taking this thing on the road quite yet. Um, have some uh, refreshing to do on the fifth wheel. We weren't able to do that before the fifth wheel got mounted on the, the uh, frame. So we're gonna do it on the frame. We'll get that kind of cleaned up. You can see here, it's been sitting so long. There's some uh, moss, or not moss, just like um, mildew, whatever growing on that. Not a big deal. We'll get it cleaned up. Here's the other gas tank, diesel tank. We had to replace that line that was leaking bad. So we replaced that. Um, the tractor prior to our ownership was actually hit in this corner. So this is a replacement tank. This is not the original tank from the show. This whole back corner has was reconstructed. Uh, if you look on the inside, you can see rivets and body filler. And actually this, this is all coming off. So we're gonna have to get that repaired properly. We got the battery boxes, which we primed quite a bit ago. There's my cat. And uh, we're gonna have to get that cleaned up and painted black. This, um, once we get this kind of mechanically sound, then uh, it's gonna be time to send it off and get it painted, so. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. All right, so there we go. We did a refresh on the door panels uh, quite a while ago, got them cleaned up as best we could. Wanted to keep them all original, so we didn't repaint or anything, because this is molded gray plastic, but we got it all cleaned up. You can see there, there's more of the uh, red paint from when it was painted in 85. So I've got uh, desiccant and mouse traps in here. Fortunately, we haven't had any issues with mice ever since I eradicated all of them back in the day. So let's go ahead and climb up here. All right, so the steering wheel, as you can see, is out. We're gonna go recover that and get it reinstalled, which would be awesome. But here's what we're looking at. 
in a previous video, we took all the gauges out, all the bezels, got everything cleaned out. We cleaned out all the duct work from all the mice that were living in there. Um, you know, it's amazing. It doesn't, like you get in here and it does not smell like mice anymore. I mean, it smells like mothballs, but um, it's not nearly as offensive as it once was. We do need to find a replacement dash pad, which I think are super hard to find because this one is cracked in a few places, but um, it'll certainly work for now. And that's the original radio. So when you see RC3 in the wrong crowd, he's sitting here, he's got his feet propped up here and he's up here looking at what's supposed to be a basketball game on TV. He's actually just looking at the radio there. The radio does work, so that's good. Um, we do have a headliner, we have not recovered it yet, and we're not putting it in yet because um, you can't see it very well here, but there's a crease on the top of the hood and there's a place on the hood down there where someone drilled a hole in the roof. So we want to get all that stuff fixed and make sure this is watertight before we put the headliner in. So that's going to wait just a little bit. Um, what else do we have here? Let's go ahead and get down. Take you around to the other side, open that door up. Yeah, so thankfully the radiator grill and everything is in perfect shape. So that does not need any repairs. We already cleaned up the GMC letters, which were all faded. We repainted those. We do have some fading a little bit on these lenses, but they're original as far as we know. So we'll probably just leave that stuff. See, more, there's more of that red paint right there. So the seats, um, this is the original seat from when it was new, original fabric. The fabric is a little bit faded, a little bit dirty in places. We cleaned it as best as we could. That seat is a replacement. When we got the truck, it had a, a full replacement seat. Danny Nassif came to the rescue again, supplied us with that seat. We cleaned it up so we have matching seats once again. Um, we actually did find new old stock of this fabric and this fabric. So uh, at some point these will probably get recovered because they are pretty faded, um, but there's no holes in them. But for now, we're going to leave it as is. That'll be like down the road. Um, yeah, what else do we have? Anything else exciting? We got all the seatbelts back in. Still have a little bit of wiring to do there. It's got a 13 speed Eaton transmission, which we believe works well. There's still a sleeve I gotta put on over there, but uh, she's really coming together. There's the air horn pool cable. That was broken. We had to get a new valve, got a new valve, got that installed. So um, haven't had the batteries in this truck for about a year. I've been storing them inside just and keeping them charged. So um, looking forward to getting the batteries back in and hopefully taking this down the road and giving it a, a good workout. We did put new carpet in, but because um, the carpet was just completely trashed. However, there's the center panel that sat on top of the carpet. And um, even though it's faded, I thought it'd be cool to keep it in as uh, a, you know, a piece of the original carpet. So we scrubbed this like you wouldn't believe and uh, reinstalled it just as a little, you know, why not? All right, so let's go ahead and let's get the steering wheel recovered and then reinstalled. All right, folks, it's that time again. We're gonna take a minute to thank our newest donors for the semi wall. So if you're not familiar with what we're doing here, um, we are giving you guys the opportunity to have your name added to a very special plaque we're gonna have made that's gonna be mounted inside of the Knight Rider trailer for all of time. Um, what you see here is my handwritten kind of placeholders. We're gonna replace this with something very nice, I promise. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that we could do to thank you um, for supporting us to get this trailer 
um, restored back to its Knight Rider glory. This is an absolutely massive, massive, massive project. You have no idea, or maybe you do if you've been following all the videos, and we absolutely could not do it without your support. So um, we've got like 250 donors so far. It is mind blowing. Um, for a $100 donation, you get your name added to this plaque. And to get your name on it, um, you can send money via PayPal, nightridersemi at gmail.com. We also have Venmo options and some other options. So if you can't do PayPal, but you still want to contribute, just email us at nightridersemi at gmail.com and we will make sure that um, your name gets on the wall. So let me bring you in closer and show you the latest names on this list. All right, so right here, this list, these are our latest um, donors to be added to the wall. So if you donated and you don't see your name on here, please let us know. Or if it's misspelled, please let us know. I did want to point out one special, special name on here. I mean, you're all special. Every one of you is special. But I made a promise I'd point one out. Corey Wood. Corey, this is a very special gift from your friend Adam Wright. It is a belated Merry Christmas gift. Why is it belated? Well, that's kind of our fault. You see, Adam arranged this prior to Christmas, and I think we dropped the ball a little bit. So very sorry for that. But Corey, your name, whether you like it or not, is going to be immortalized on the Knight Rider semi-trailer for all of time, thanks to your friend Adam Wright. All right, so there's the new names, and these are all, all the names of everyone else that has donated so far. So, so humbled by your support. You guys are the best. And because of that, one day, we're gonna be sitting right there looking up dossiers on a Texas Instruments computer, figuring out what happened to Garth Knight or Alvin Kincaid or Frank Poole, getting in kit right about here, driving out at 35 miles an hour going down the highway and going to fight some crime. All right, enough of that. Back to work. All right, so this is the steering wheel from the Flag semi-tractor. As you can see, it's seen better days. But I'm like 99.9672% sure that underneath all of this tape and tape and more tape is the original brown leather of the steering wheel. Now, this is not salvageable. And we looked into sending the steering wheel out to be recovered. And there are people that will do that. It's quite expensive. So I got a crazy idea. As if I'm not busy enough, I thought, well, why don't I just recover the steering wheel? I learned to sew way back in seventh grade. And I still sew here and there when something needs repaired. And I watched a couple videos on refinishing a steering wheel and it doesn't look that difficult. So why don't I give it a try? Um, so I pulled the steering wheel out yesterday and it's the hub that needs a little bit of cleaning and refinishing work, but there's the wheel. So you can see this aluminum has uh, definitely some wear to it, some imperfections. Got to do some research and figure out the best way to kind of clean this finish up. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know if there's some kind of a chemical you can put on it, because it almost looks like it almost looks like there's a clear coat on here that's peeling off. So we might have to see if we can get all of this um, debris off of here and then maybe, I don't know, clear coat it? Looks like that's the way it was done. It's hard to, hard to tell, but like even like right down here, you can clearly see that something has peeled off of it. And I think it's like a clear coat. So, but before we did do any of that, we got to get this old cover off. Now I'm going to get this off very carefully because I want to use it as a template 
for some new brown leather that we've got on our way, on the way. Um, we'll use it as a template and then see if we can refinish the steering wheel on our own. All right, so I've already started with my trusty blade here, going through and I'm just cutting all of the old stitching out. And I wanted to be really careful on these pieces that jut out here into the spokes because I'm paying close attention to how they were done originally. So I, I already cut that one out and it was, it was just glued a little bit in the back here to this piece. This piece was glued right here, but on the front side, it's actually stitched. So I'm gonna leave it, leave the stitching intact on this front part so we can see here, you know, we'll be able to use these as a template to um, make our new ones. So let's go through here and just get more of our stitching cut out. This is the easy part, the very easy part. Some of these areas are just so thin and so worn that we want to do this really, really carefully. There we go. And see, we can just kind of peel this. This is where it's glued a little bit on the backs here. And um, we got to cut the stitches off here too. So this all comes off. go so we can peel that off and you can see then this will all come off well normally together but this is pretty rough shape so all right let's move along here and you can also see we're missing some of the foam right here and then it's a little thin right here so we're gonna we're gonna keep the original foam but we'll build this back up in here so it's nice and uh, smooth all right, some of these areas are covered with so many layers of tape, it's really hard to even see where the stitching is. And of course, there's no easy way to get off all these layers of tape, so we'll just uh, do the best we can, I think. So there, I can kind of see the stitching right here. A little bit. All right, so I did find, if I take my razor blade, and I score just the tape and then get my blade under there. I can peel all of this tape off of here, which is going to make it a lot easier to see the stitches, at least in this section of the wheel. Of course, that's making the leather sticky, but oh well. Look at that, it's quite satisfying. Yeah, but see now we can see the stitches so much easier and you can see it's even split right here. There's like 30 layers of tape on here. Every type of tape imaginable. You keep peeling off a layer, and then look, there's a whole another layer of tape. It's nuts. But I guess it was a working truck, and you know, they didn't necessarily care what it looked like. But we do. And of course, we've got to save this original steering wheel cover, right? Because this is the same cover that Hasselhoff touched and Peter Peros. I mean, this is history right here, right? Right. Let's 
See, that's the other thing. If we did send this out for someone to recover, they wouldn't, uh, you know, they probably would throw away the old cover and definitely wouldn't treat it with the reverence that we are. So maybe it's good if we can keep this in house. Oh, that one came off too. So let's keep track of that one goes there, that one goes there. There we go. So now we have the wheel down to its core. Now you can see, really, the rest of this foam is in nice shape. I don't think any of this is gonna have to be replaced. We'll do a tiny bit of filling there. Definitely that's the worst part right there. So we'll build that back up and right here. All right, so fast forward a little bit and we got our replacement leather in, cut, and I got some of it sewn. I uh, love the internet because I've never sewn a steering wheel before. I've done some sewing, but never a steering wheel. But, uh, you know, followed a couple tutorials and it's turned out like really nice. I mean, look at that. So, I had to sew on these flaps here, um, which will create these pieces on the spoke. So this one's done, this one's sewn on, but now we just have to wrap it around and sew it on the back side. So to do that, we need our two needles because this is a baseball stitch. Learn all kinds of stuff. Never did a baseball stitch before. there we go. I mean, certainly not per perfect, but turned out really nice. And this, according to the way it was on the original cover, this just gets a bead of fabric glue and gets glued down just like that. So let's turn it over. Hey, that turned out pretty nice. This is still loose, obviously, because I have to do all that, but look at that. I did this earlier. I did this one the other night. This is a long process, but man, turned out nice. All right, so it's time to put the steering wheel back on the steering column, which is kind of exciting. So before I do that, I wanted to show you something regarding the steering wheel and a little bit of mystery that we've got going on here. So. First thing I have to do first is get this um, cover kind of screwed back together because I had taken it off to look at the inside of this column here to see if I could get some questions answered. Questions which you'll understand here in a minute. Um, and it didn't really, I mean, it answered some questions, but still left some other questions. So bring you in here. Let me get this last one screwed in and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so all the questions revolve around the horn button on the steering wheel. So when we got, when we got the um, truck, the steering wheel was in place, it was a disaster. The horn button was there, but it was just loose and just kind of sitting in there. All right, so let me bring you in closer here and show you something. So you see this ring right here, this contact? There's a wire that's connected to this contact. All right, keep that in mind. So now, if 
we look if we look at the back of the steering wheel let me see if i can yeah you see that there's a there's a plunger right there on the the back that is the contact for this ring on the steering column so basically no matter which way the the wheel is when you press down um it'll make contact with anywhere on that ring and thus make the horn blow but the confusing part is what we have on front so the other end of that plunger was just this cut wire all right so the question is how how does this work because you would need something to push down on the wire to make the contact with that ring to make the horn blow but it's a flimsy flexible wire how do you push down on it right and then when we look at the horn button this is all that was there there's the ring there's the actual button there's a metal disc and then a backing plate and um, I was working with a guy, a GMC General guy, and this, this wheel that's on this General is called a sport wheel. And apparently it's, um, I don't know if it's rare, but I don't, most of the Generals I see don't have this sport wheel and they have a different horn style. So what I, I think we're missing pieces is, is where I'm going with this. Because when you press the button down, there's no way to pop it back up. Um, so I think there's a spring missing on the inside. And if you look at the, the back here, you see there's three mounting holes on the back of this um, trim ring and three holes in this disc. So, and my GMC general guy said this was all a one piece. Um, you know, these weren't individual pieces. This all has one part number. So I think we need to find a replacement horn assembly because we're missing pieces. We need to make it so when you press this, it pushes that plunger down, makes contact on the steering column, blows the horn. Now, of course, we do have, you know, our air horn, but we kind of want everything to work. All right, so that's my spiel. If you have any information, or if you have a horn button, love to talk to you. All right, so let's go ahead, without further ado, and let's get this steering wheel reinstalled. I think it's going to go pretty much just like that. Let me double check something here. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll go ahead and get that on. Then we've got our uh, washer and nut here. I may have to take this back off to figure out this horn stuff, but for now, we'll put it on here. There we go. We've got a recovered steering wheel that you can actually like touch, which is really cool. You can lower it down a little. Let's see. Put it right about there. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so nice to be able to, be able to like touch things in here and not feel like you have to go take a shower. That's a big improvement. All right, so I figured this is now a good of place as any to go over our latest Patreon flag agents. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar what a Patreon flag agent is, we have a, um, a community on Patreon of supporters. And uh, if you become a Patreon supporter, you get early access to all of our videos. You get exclusive videos, you get early um, or exclusive photos as well. Just all kinds of really great uh, perks, but our top tier supporters are flag agents. So as a flag agent, you'll get a shout out in a future video, which we're going to do here in a minute, and you'll get your Knight Rider questions answered for all of eternity, as long as you're a flag agent. So if you're interested in joining and becoming a flag agent, there's a link in the corner of this video right now and in the description below. So definitely want to check it out. We've got um, quite a really, really good group of people over there. Um, 
in our Patreon community. So let's go over our latest Patreon flag agents. We have Chris Parenti. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. We definitely appreciate your support. And Dave B. Dave, thank you so much. Um, so let's go over our questions. So from Chris Parenti, I'm building the fan home kit. I'm on stage 26 of building the turbine engine. My question is where and when was it stated or shown in the show that this was its power plant? Um, it was never shown that kit had a turbine engine. It was only talked about. Um, and the, the example that comes to mind right now is in the episode Goliath, when after Goliath and Kit have their confrontation, Kit's wrecked, and, um, and uh, Kit's, Kit makes a comment about um, his turbines, and without them, there he's powerless. So it's, it was definitely mentioned in the show, and there was, um, you know, in some of the um, supporting documentation, I think the competition is no competition mail-away poster from August of 1982 might have referenced a turbine engine. So, and of course you have the sound of, of Kit's engine. You have the sound of the turbine, um, especially in the first season whenever he's going past. So all those little details put together signify that Kit has a turbine engine. All right, Nate Anderson. Um, can you give us a little background into how you know what the heck you're doing in the teardown and rebuild of the semi? It's a huge undertaking. I think your progress is moving fast. It's very impressive. Who is behind the scenes that is helping you with the semi project? Has the progress moved faster than you anticipated? How the heck do I know what I'm doing? Um, well, first of all, who says I know what I'm doing? <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, ever since I was, I was a kid, um, I liked solving puzzles. I liked building things, and um, you know, even as a young adult, I've I've tor torn down and restored so many like Trans Ams and other cars. And to me, it was always well, just get in there and try it. And if you if you stuck if you get stuck somewhere, there's always someone out there that can that has the answer. So you just need to find them. So don't be afraid to try these things. And that's really where it, where it started. And that was before the internet. Now it's super easy to find people that, you know, can answer your questions. But back then it, it was not as easy, but that was still my, my attitude back then. And it is now. So have I ever worked on a heavy duty semi-tractor? No. Have I ever torn down a 45 foot semi-trailer? No. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, um, it's, 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 it's a good workout, not only physically, but mentally too. Um, and then add in the fact that you're trying to figure out, well, you know, what modifications were done by the studio? What modifications were done after? When were they done? You know, all this stuff. So, um, to me, it's just, you know, just get in there, do it. If you get stuck, find the person that can help you. Um, who's helping me behind the scenes? Um, well, um, I guess the biggest we've, I mean, we've got a couple people that we've shown on the channel before. We've got Eric Wang, obviously, um, who is deeply invested in this project and makes trips out here as often as he can. He's in Chicago, so he's, you know, he's not here all the time. Uh, Danny Nassif, um, has certainly helped us out quite a bit and, um, I suspect will continue to do so. Um, so we've had, um, you know, we have the Northeast Ohio Dukes group, which are not too far from me. They've come out and help. So, um, but most of the time, it's just me out here with a camera, talking, no one's around, um, just doing the work. And um, it has in many ways moved, especially the trailer, has moved a lot quicker than I thought it would. The teardown didn't take, I mean, it's still the teardown still took six, seven months, but it, it definitely went a little quicker than I thought it would. Um, so I'm hoping the rebuild is the same way. So we'll see. Um, all right. Michael Hall, do we know where the flag tractor is that was used in the first two seasons? No, we don't. We have the VIN of the tractor. We have the original invoice of the first tractor from GMC, the 1980 general. Um, all attempts to find it so far have failed. Um, maybe one day you'll be able to come onto this channel and see that we found the original flag tractor, but we don't have it yet. Same goes with Goliath. We haven't found Goliath yet either. Or have we, and we're not telling you. 
Hmm. Steve Wills. Hi guys, love everything about your show. Keep up the amazing content. Thanks, Steve. Um, I would like to ask you about the two red vehicles from Night of the Drones. I remember seeing these cars when first televised and was amazed by how cool they looked. What make were they? When did the crew gain the inspiration to use these particular cars? Whatever happened to them? Um, so I think you're, you're referring to the two Ford Thunderbirds that were used as the drone cars in Night of the Drones. Um, you know, I don't really have any information on where they came from. I'm sure that they were um, just part of a fleet of of cars that were available to the studio. Chances are those two Thunderbirds were used in other productions. They might have been painted a different color. I can tell you that um, one of the two drone cars reappears in season four in Night Racer as the car that gets sideswiped by the killer car in that episode. And then in Night Song, um, which is either the next episode or a couple episodes later, one of the cars appears again uh, painted tan. But after that, um, we don't really know what happened to them. Chances are they, they probably got rented out for some other studios and then either got sold or scrapped after the show ended. Um, when you, uh, this is from, next one's from, uh, Robbie Cohen. When you finally put the special plaque together with everyone's names, um, what specifically will identify each of us? For example, there could be a thousand Robbie Cohen's out to come out there. Um, so, I mean, no matter what we do, I mean, there could be a thousand Robbie Cohen's in the United States, you know, I mean, even if we put in a, a country. So, um, you know, it's, it's more that you'll know that you contributed to the semi. Um, we did talk about including countries, but the problem is we didn't think about that at the beginning. So now we have literally hundreds of, of, um, people that have paid to have their name on the trailer wall on a plaque and we don't have their country. So, um, we're probably just going to stick with names, but rest assured, you'll know that that is your name for all eternity. Um, and if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, we do have an opportunity to have your name on the semi wall. Steve Gregorif, did William Daniels ever have an issue with not being listed in the credits? Um, not only did he not have an issue, but he requested to not have his name shown because, um, well, first of all, he's working on St. Elsewhere. And second of all, um, I, I don't think he had much faith in the show. I mean, he was asked to come in and film the pilot presentation as a favor for Glenn Larson. So he did that. And then the show was picked up. So I just don't think he saw the need to have credit there whenever he was doing his, um, in-person acting on St. Elsewhere. All right, so that's the end of our Patreon flag agent questions. Again, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon flag agent, link down below. Check it out. I think you'll like it.